This interview is brought to you by Burn Up Coaching and the 21 Day Challenge. If you're an entrepreneur, high achiever, or influencer, and you are committed to breaking through your plateau, breaking through the, the limiting beliefs, self-sabotage, the things that have been keeping you stuck, lack of clarity, lack of feeling like you are really living your greatest possible self, 21 Day Challenge is exactly that. You'll get crystal clear on your long-term goals. You'll break it down into bite-sized steps. And at the end of 21 days, you'll have huge momentum, huge positive results in your life as you are stepping into your greatest possible self. To get involved in your next 21 day challenge, send me a message, chris at beyourgps.com, or you can message me on Facebook and let me know you're ready for your 21 day challenge. Next up is the iTunes review of the week. And this week it's by Chad G. 89. He says, inspiring. Chris is bold with what he's doing in his 12 hour marathon. He's absolutely brilliant with what he teaches. This show has really great advice on how to better ourselves so we can better our lives. I'm excited to learn more. Thanks so much, Chad. We appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming on the show a few months ago, too. You rocked it. And if you want to give us a review, go to beyourgps.com forward slash iTunes. Or you can search Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self on the iTunes Store and give us a review like that. Good or good, very good. Now, this next woman who is coming on, oh my gosh, like just letting y'all know, she holds a super, super, super close spot in my heart. And I appreciate her so much. And she is absolutely inspiring. One of the most massive action takers I've ever known. And just everything she does, so aligned, so connected, so loving, so congruent. And she loves the heck out of her clients. She has an amazing podcast. And I can't say like enough good things about her because she's just like so brilliant, so beautiful, so awesome. So definitely stay tuned throughout this entire interview because she's sharing gold all the time. The wisdom that she has is profound. The The guidance that she shares, especially with her women, um, women clients, you know, these women who are millennials, who are growing into their greatest possible selves, she absolutely just raises the bar on what's possible, opens their minds up, expands their vision. So I have no doubt that that is exactly what will happen for you in this interview. So stay tuned all the way through because Petia Kolibova is coming on in just a minute. Grab your pens, grab your papers, get ready to take notes. Petia Kolibova is a woman's coach, a mind, body, and soul transformation guide, meditation teacher, fitness and wellness expert, body love advocate, TV and podcast host, and lifestyle entrepreneur. She walks women through a proven system that allows them to create a life that feels fulfilling on the inside, not just one that looks good on the outside. And she is an absolutely incredible human being. Petia, are you ready to rock this? Always. I don't Always. like dancing here. Stop. <laughs> we got to do it together. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for being on the show today. You're a superstar, and I just love seeing your dreams unfold perfectly, powerfully, and seeing you bring, bring them to life. And thanks for showing up to share some massively valuable information, transformation, and guidance for our audience today. Thank you. Absolutely. I couldn't miss that. Like when I, uh, when I find out about your topic, I'm like, I gotta be in, I gotta be in, I gotta, let me be in, I wanna be in, can I be in? <laughs> it's like the donkey from the Shrek. Yes. Are we there Are we there? Can I be there? Can I be there? Can I be there? I gotta speak. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Your energy is just so like empowering and uplifting. And I know it wasn't always like this. So we're going to go back into the journey a little bit to catch people up in just a second. And let's talk about that theme. Let's talk about that. How to not care what people think, right? Where do we start with that? Where would you start? And how can our audience start not caring what people think? Well, you start by caring too much. Mm. <laughs> That's where I started because as many women, we are just, I feel like we're just brought to this world to be nurturing, to be really the force of nature who mm. can, we give life. So we would just do anything, you know, mm. we would just like give blood to people just so they can live. Like, I gotcha, you know, so I was the one who was doing everything for everyone mm. but me. Wow. And that created incredible emptiness inside of me that mm. I was trying to fill with 
overspending money and you know drinking and eating and it developed in eating disorder because you just can't be even sitting with yourself because if you sit with yourself you know it's like all these thoughts come to you right. so i think that you stop caring when you realize that what you're doing it's really not working and that you're not serving anyone because how many times can you really hit your hit your head against the wall like how many times will you do that well if you keep doing it, it will kill you. And what I was doing, it would definitely kill me. Like not respecting myself, not having boundaries, not seeing the worth in myself. Being, it was just like to the point that it was like my soul screaming at me, like, don't be s silly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if kids are like watching this time, you know, like, don't be silly. Don't put yourself down again and yeah. again and again, because what I was doing, I was putting myself down so people can step on me so they can rise higher. And you know what? What if I'm not there? It will fall even deeper. Hmm. So it, it was, I think everything changed for me mainly the last year, mainly everything changed the last year when I really dove into the meditation. And also when I realized that not everything would you see on the outside, it's what's inside. Mm. Because I had people around me that people would think about them, how amazing they are, how enlightened, whatever. I saw behind the scene. I'm like, mm. that's BS. It's not like that. Right. And I would let those people to tell me about how worthy I am, how good I am. And so often we let other people decide our worth. Yeah. Our parents in a school, our lovers, mm -hmm. then our, you know, husband, wife. It's crazy. So it's like when you get to that point, like, okay, if this is going to go this way, I'll die. Mm. Yeah. So it's like reaching that point of like rock bottom is really what it took for you to have a new direction, to discover a new truth, right? Like you didn't have a reason to go in this direction until you made a decision that there was, you're not going to tolerate anymore. And along that journey, you started discovering more and more about who you are and what's important to you. And then prioritizing that, those values, those, those gifts that you have and making sure that you're living your life in alignment with those rather than what you used to, which was what people thought about you. Exactly. And you said it absolutely right. I made the decision. Mm. I said enough, it's enough. And when I made the decision, it was a couple months before I was like, enough, it's enough. I was on my knees. I was crying. I was sobbing. Like I shouldn't probably say, but like I was in my room and I'm like, I just don't want to even live. And I was like drinking wine and you know, like, I'm like, I just want to numb this pain. I don't want to feel anymore. I am done feeling. I don't want to. And you know how many clients are trying to protect their hearts and they're shutting down. Yeah. It's so painful to think and feel that you're alone so you know i think that there was not like one rock bottom i had so many of them that i got mm. tired of them you know like how i was like how many signs do i truly need yeah because yeah. what i realized with uh, yesterday i was talking with my new mentor and we were talking and she was like well, you got to be more specific who you're talking to because you are helping people for a specific reason hmm. because of toxic relationships. Hmm. So for those who, who don't know my story, I was physically and mentally abused by my stepfather. And sometimes people look at me and like, oh, I'm so sorry. Well, he didn't know any better. Like right. I forgave him like... He abused me. I ran away when I was 18, you know, because he was abusing me for, I don't even know how many years. My mom remarried with him when she was, when I was five. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that people are like, oh, I'm so sorry. I was like, no, for him, I forgave him. I didn't forgive myself. Yeah. That's the hardest. You know, like how many times I abused my body? Like today, like I'm sitting in a shower and I'm like embracing my body. I'm like, I love you so much. Thank you for putting up with me. Oh my gosh, mm. I would give up on it. Yeah. You know how much torture? 
like, you know, cutting my hands and having eating disorder and being in toxic relationships. And I ran away from home when I was 18 to the relationship where my ex was crazy and he was like cutting his his hand with knife asking me to tell the truth when i was telling the truth what do you tell the people you know like <laughs> like i am telling the truth and he's sitting there in front of me and cutting himself and like pulling my hair around the living room and like yelling at me and none of my abusers would ever hurt me so other people can see it hmm. Hmm. so you feel ashamed because you come to the point that you think you deserve it hmm. you see so now I'm, it's like, I'm slowly rising. And like you and me, we talk about it on our pre-call mm -hmm. yesterday. And I told her like, I'm working on my confidence. And you're like, you? I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like people look at me and they're like, oh my gosh, you're so radiant and you're so energetic and you're so loving and you're so confident. You know what? It's a daily habit. Yeah. It's a practice every single day. If you would ask the love of my life, like there are some tears. Like sometimes I just turn into this baby girl and life has no meaning and I'm not doing enough and I'm not enough. And it's like, mm. it all comes around. The best thing is that we bounce faster when we know who we are and what do we stand for? Mm. You're not going to tell me who I am anymore. Damn. That's the difference. That's so powerful. You bounce back faster when you know who you are. Yeah. And I think that's so important because when you are, are grounded in yourself, you don't care about what other people think. You're like, you're so, you have a foundation of you can do like anything you set your mind to. You don't need other people's approval. So I really love that. And I love how you've like created a life about that, living that. So, I'm curious, like, what was the biggest thing that you realized about yourself that helped you, like, step into that, into that self-worth? What did you see about yourself, about your life, about your body that gave you that new perspective, that new, um, like, awakening? Like, what did you see within that is inherently valuable and important? I really love how you mentioned the in. Mm -hmm. Because all of my life, I was thinking that when I change what is on the outside, mm -hmm. I will feel better. And there were a few things that really opened my, you know, like my heart and mm -hmm. my mind. And one of them was, um, you will never be happy when you're expecting other people to make you happy. You either mm. are or you're not. Mm. Nothing else can make you happy if you can't make yourself happy. That was the first eye opener for me in my life because I realized I was relying on others to give me the approval, to give me that high, to tell mm. me that I'm good enough. And you know what, Chris? All of us, we are in our own poop. Like we have our own stuff that we are working on, right. you know, so nobody can really see what you have inside. So yeah. I think that I found the, the inner, it's so funny because I, I never got this question before, but now that I'm thinking about it, I know that I started to realize my worth, what's really inside of me. It's when I created the list of my core values mm -hmm. and the person that I was seeing in that moment, I'm like, no, 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 no. Petia, yeah. what the heck are you doing? Mm. And then I just really look around me and I'm like, okay, whatever, it's not going to align with these core values. It's not going to be in my life. And then the, I just really started to be unapologetic, take a deep breath. I'm like, okay, I'm not settling anymore. I know there is something better hmm. because this is no better. <laughs> mm. And you had to get clear on who you are. You had to be aware of those, those core values first. And then you can say, is my current reality matching it or not? Yeah. Nope, yep. not matching it. Okay, it's time to start nurturing those. What actions would I take this week, today, to be able to to nurture those? And I think a big part of it comes from getting clarity on that vision, which you help your clients do. You're amazing at doing that and, and helping them tap into like what's important to them and then being able to break that down and, and find out, hey, what is important to me? How can I take action on those today? Mm-hmm. 
like you said, it's every single day. What can I do today? I always ask myself for my daily intention. So when I wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. I just ask myself, what is the action that aligns with me, my growth and my business growth? So mm -hmm. I know in the morning, what is the next best step for me? But it's really about being intentional. So many people go throughout the life and they try to wing it. Hmm. It doesn't work. You know, for me, I'm intentional about everything I'm doing. If I want to take a complete day off, go to the park with my lab and we are having, you know, popcorn and just like listening to the music or having a pizza, be it. Hmm. We are going to be completely, fully present. When we're working, we're working our uh, booty off. <laughs> <laughs> But it's really about being intentional and about the daily activities. And yeah. like you said, it truly everything started with me knowing who I am. Hmm. And if you don't align with it, hey, if you don't make me feel good, if you don't make me feel like I am, you know, like I matter or I'm growing or you hmm. don't align with my core values, why would I keep you around? Hmm. Because in the past, I would keep around people because I would think that that's what it means to be a nice person, right? Mm. Like you got to be nice to other people and you would keep people around just to be nice. That's BS. Mm. You know, it's like how many people you can truly keep around you and how many people you're enabling to be like, not the nicest people, let's call them. Okay. Right. Right. It's like, right. because if you don't tell them like, hey, you don't do that. Hey, this hurts. Yeah. People keep doing it. And I was that person who was enabling them. Mm. It's like in my past relationship, like I was like, like, hey, I don't feel like, like we're planning for a week for something. And hey, I don't feel like hitting out today. Okay. And I'm at home sitting on my ass and nobody mm. cares. Like then I'm crying because I was excited because I was planning for it the whole you know, they, or because I spoke with someone and it looked like a flirting. So I'm flirting now that I'm like, I'm faithful. Excuse me. Like that has nothing to do with me. So you start to see that by you letting people to say the things that are untrue to you, you're being untrue to yourself. You're lying mm -hmm. to yourself. Like you're cheating on yourself. Dang. <laughs> Dang. That's powerful. So powerful. It's true, though. Like, like we have a, a relationship. I think we've we've talked about this before. Like, we have relationships with people, of course, you know, people outside of us. And we also have this really powerful relationship with ourselves. You know, it, it has to be with us. We have to have a relationship with ourselves. How do we trust ourselves? How do we listen to ourselves? How do we respect ourselves that's like the number one relationship that i know you you say to start with right like that's number one that's the the mm -hmm. most important relationship that you can really pour love into because it's going to be with you for the rest of your life yeah absolutely and that's the thing that i was working on all the relationships on the outside let's mm -hmm. forgive my dad let's create a good relationship with my mom let's be a, a good sister let's be mm. you know like good employee let's be a good roommate you know like i wanted to be good for everybody because i was thinking that if i'm good for everyone they will approve me and they will love me because it's you know the hierarchy of the needs we really want to feel safe and we want to mm. feel like we belong and we want to have that feeling that it's bigger than just us and what happens is that we're trying to start on the top without like taking care of the base that it's mm. us, mm. you know, take care of yourself first. And we keep repeating it and repeating about, you know what, like there are messages that in personal development I'm hearing for last eight years. Mm. And it's like eight years later, it's like, Oh, now I know what they meant. Yes. Yes. It takes that repetition. It takes, it takes not just hearing the words, but matching them to life, to life experiences, like connecting the dots. Right. Um, I was, I was watching this guy and, um, he, he talked about, uh, he's like a, a, you know, billion dollar guy. And he talked about how there's two sides of the screen. One side is um, these dots and they're all just like spread out all over the screen, right? And the other side is dots, but they're all connected 
together, right? And so like what we can do as coaches for people is like we get to connect those dots for people. We get to help them connect the dots together. You heard this information, you heard these words, you heard these phrases, and how does it actually apply and connect in your life? That's where people are lacking a lot of the times. It's like they're not able to connect the dots. They're not able to really put the whole picture together. And that's one of the amazing things that you do and that we do for our clients, which is so awesome because it's fulfilling to say, hey, what's your dream? What's your outline? What what are the dots that you have already, you know, splattered on the paper, so to speak? How do we connect them together? How do we you know, help you connect them together so you can leverage that as a part of your story, as a part of your journey, and help you propel yourself forward? Mm, absolutely. And you know, it's, it's interesting because like you said, I believe that we all need coaches because you cannot see it all together because you are in it. Right. You are in it and there are blind spots and it's, it's so interesting because my last two dream clients are coaches. And I felt a little bit hesit- like hesitance, right. you know, to go to them. I was like, well, they're coaches. Like it's, it's a little bit more challenging to like offer yourself to coaches because they're not like completely new to the industry, you know? Right. You, and the thing is that I, when I speak now with women who have like side hustle and really want to create a positive impact in the world, like, the number one issue is sabotage, self-sabotage and worthiness. Mm. And they are scared of to be like rejected. Like I don't like my last client that I had a call on Monday, we had a call and she emailed me the next day. She was like, Katya, I've been thinking about it. It's heck yes for me mm. because I believe in you. But the thing is that when we were talking, she is so talented. She's so gifted. She's so, mm. she's like, She's a wellness and abundance coach. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I can really help you to get to the next level because even when we're working with people who are a couple steps behind us, we still have to do our own work. Totally. It's it's like, we are like, I don't know if I can get there. I don't know if I can go there. Like, yes, you can. You need help and guidance. So it's, it's incredible because I truly feel like we women, I don't know, like we're playing it small. And when we are like playing it big, it's freaking fake. Like I mm. cheer so much on women who are on their yeah, power. Do. Like I've been, you know, I've been uh, last year in Lori Harder's event, mm-hmm. uh, Bliss. I'm going uh, in March again. Mm-hmm. I was on Angeli Pace to be Brave. And what excites me the most, it's the seeing the speakers on stage. So in mm. the past, I would compare myself with them. I was like, she's prettier. She has more money. She has already two cute kids. I don't have that. You know, I know all these things. Now I look at them. I was like, heck yes. Like, girl, go for it. It's so inspiring to really see what we can accomplish. But why I'm so drawn and attracted to them is because they're in their own power. Yeah. That's what really excites me. And that's what put the fire under my booty last year. Mm. And also somebody who helped me to launch my podcast. That was another fire. What a, what a great guy. He must have been. Oh, my gosh. It was burning. <laughs> it was burning under my ass. <laughs> the thing is that what really, really, really turned everything around for me was first realizing my core values. And that's really just by realizing what you stand for and what you don't stand for. And I give this exercise to all of my clients, 20 and 20, 20 things you stand for, 20 things you don't stand for, pick top three, Mm. non-negotiable. For me, it's loyalty, generosity, always learning. Those three, if you don't have them, you are not in my life, I don't care. You're not Mm. my client. You're not my lover. You're not my family. I can love you from very, very, very far away. But if you're not generous, meaning that you are giving your heart, like it doesn't have to be money, but it can be love. It can be heart. It can be like nourishing attention. Like a person who is generous shows up for others, but not in people pleasing manner, but because they, they're overflowing. They can really give. Right. Loyalty, it's everything for me Hmm. because most of my partners cheated on me. And then they told me it's normal because men are hunters. Because men, we are like supposed to like go for it and have as many babies as possible. Yeah, when you were Neanderthal. (laughs) Right? Right. 
<laughs> not when you live in the United States. And like, it's so interesting because last, you know, like last two of my biggest relationships told me this, like hmm. after 40 years being in relationship, I found out that three years of it, this person was seeing someone else. Right. And it was just for fun, but he loved me. I'm like, nah. you know, and then they tell me it's normal. I was like, no, it's not. Hmm. And if this is normal, I prefer to have a five dogs and be alone. No cats. <laughs> no but cats. you see what I mean? If this is the new norm for this society, no, I, I pass. Well, I, I think, I think it's, it's the old norm, and I think people justify it because it was a part of our past. They're like, <clears throat> hey, you know, it used to be like this. And it's like, well, at one point that was true. At one point, we were also very unconscious and unawake and unaware and untapped into our soul, so to speak, and, and how to grow it. And um, <clears throat> I think it's so amazing the time we live in now because we're able to focus on our soul and what feeds our soul, what nourishes our soul. And for you, it's like generosity, it's growth, it's loyalty. You know, these these things are super important to you. And um it's awesome because once you're aware of those, you can really design your life around fulfilling those values, you know? And that's that's like such an amazing life to live. And that's like, why would you tolerate, hey, I want to go, I want to go really master, um, you know, being disciplined or I want to really go, like that's important too, but that wasn't a good example. I want to really go master, let's say, uh, let's see, like something that's completely unrelated to generosity or loyalty or, um, you know, abundance or growth. Like maybe it's, I, I want to, I want to go master being stagnant. I want to go master, you know, spending my time in ways that it's purely for entertainment and it doesn't really grow me in the, in the long run. Like we wouldn't do that because we have the clarity, we have the awareness of who we are. So we get to spend time in that. And I believe that men who are you know, sleeping around and having multiple parts partners and stuff and have that mentality of, well, it's a part of being a man. I'm supposed to go conquer and, and stuff like that. It's like, I don't believe you're really awake. I don't believe that you're really aware of what nourishes your soul because most souls are nourished by like deepness, not by width, by deepness, by, by deep conversations, by deep relationships, a relationship you know and and also deep sex i mean deep uh you know the deepest of deep right like super deep okay because that's like having that depth is super important and it, it really makes a difference in our fulfillment would you agree with that petia absolutely yeah it's just reminding me of something very personal so no oh. <laughs> so you're absolutely right and also that's something that i'm telling my my clients now because as part of i'm working with women who are really creating a positive impact in this world yeah. so they're healers they're coaches and you know sometimes that means just being the best mom ever you know yeah. but the thing it's like really creating a positive impact in the world and i help them with social media just so they are seen and heard mm. because that's part of it if you really want to make an impact in the world the world gotta know about you right yeah. and they're like oh my gosh i have less likes i was like you know what screw that that doesn't ma mean anything mm. you have a strategy you keep showing up like there is a strategy behind everything we are doing with intention however i when i used to be posting fitness pictures i would have like five seven hundred likes and maybe 10 comments mm. And all of it like, oh, you look hot, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Right. Now, maybe I have only 300 likes, but I have 90 comments. Yeah. They go deep. <laughs> and that's what really... <laughs> And that's what really it's important to me. Go deep, not wide. Focus mm. on your why. Why the heck you are doing it? Like, why you want to be helping people? Like, you want to have a business? Why? Like, mm. if you want to just do it because you want to have a money, it's 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 not deep enough, you know? Like you really have to have that burning desire and i, I truly i know you do <laughs> we got it <laughs> yes we do you know but chris also it comes down to realizing how magnificent hmm. how beautiful and how unique we are we're trying to fit when we were not meant to fit i don't remember the whole quote but from marion williams you know mm -hmm. williamson the one that she say uh when you think that who are you like who am i to be like shining brightly and be brilliant 
what are you to not? Mm. I used to be dimming my light. People were telling me like, oh, you're too loud. You know, you're like, what are you doing? You know, you're too big. You're too thick. You're too loud. You're too much. And you know what? For some people, you will be always too much or never enough. Who cares? For the right people, you are perfect. And when you're misaligned, your people know. And they will be like, hey, Chris, like, what's your greatest possible self? Yeah. Yeah. And I love and that. That's, that's out of love. That's the guidance. That's like being aware of, hey, what's your vision? What, where are you going? So that, that also brings me to the question I wanted to ask you, Petia. What's an area um, you are, are really going deep in that you're really still discovering? You're like discovering it newly. You're learning about yourself and, and certain parts of, your spell, of yourself, aspects of yourself newly. What's, what's an area you're really going deep in that you have to bring this like wonder, a mindset of, of being like childlike wonder, discovering it newly, being curious? What's one of those areas in your life right now? I, that's such a beautiful question. I love the way you speak. It's like you're reading a book. It's so beautiful. You have such a rich vocabulary. And back to your question, um, childlike wonder. So I will, I will divide it to two answers. One, it's going to be that lower girl again, mm -hmm. that I don't care. And to really like being dancing in a store or, mm. you know, like mm. doing a handstands on, um, uh, a soccer field, you know, like it's, it's going back and not to care. Hmm. It's, it's having fun because I was restricting myself because even recently, it's interesting. Recently, someone told me, somebody who is dear to my heart told me, hmm. if you're not serious, people are not going to take you seriously. Hmm. So I took it in and I really thought about it for a second, you know, and then I'm like, you know what? Those are not my people. Mm. So if I get like, if I get an opinion from somebody who I respect, it's not like, oh, screw it. No, I mm. listen. It's their yeah. experience. They're sharing with me. And you know what? I had enough of seriousness of my life when I was mm. like wearing the big girl's pants. Yep. I don't want to do that anymore. You know, like, it's, 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 it's really interesting because I, I found like, I loved playing when I was a kid and then I went into this phase where I like I hated fun and it was all about productivity. It was all about growing up faster. It was always always about like being the adult, right? And I got so burnt out on just trying to be enough and like produce results. And it's so so important that we I saw that I like went back into having fun and wanting to have fun and I see so much more fulfillment and joy in my life. So I really love that you you said that that like you know you're, you're trying to be this this woman who puts on your big girl pants and you're like wait but i'm still that little six-year-old girl like i have to dance i have to have fun i have to shake my booty i have to laugh i have to do all these fun things <laughs> <laughs> i have to the thing is oh my gosh i was listening to someone and you know like when you're in personal development you like read so much and listen to so There's much so many you different, would yeah. love to give a credit and it's just like i really cannot grasp it i don't know who was it if it was daniel laporte gabrielle bernstein or tommy billy i really don't know but i know that the, what, when i was listening to it they were saying if you want to find a purpose in your life i think it was lisa nichols got it mm -hmm. lisa nichols and i know you love her i love her yes i will interview her one day just so you know and i'll interview her first Oh, that's bad. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> you know I will play hard. <laughs> no, let's, let's, let's. I don't care who does it first. We will both do it, really. We'll do it at the same time. <laughs> In the same room. Let's do it. The thing is that she was saying, if you really, really want to find your purpose, you got to go back to what do you love to do like a child? Yeah. before you had to grow up. I had to grow up really quick because I was the older sister. My mom got divorced. I got beaten up. If I didn't do like my clothes perfectly, my cleaning mm. perfectly, it has to be perfect. Yeah. So I had to grow up really quick. And you know what? It, when I think about it, what I love to do, it's with like a little girl. It's what mm. really feeds my soul. Mm. Nature, mm. dancing, yeah. singing, mm. painting, 
it's creating and it was yeah. baking with my grandma i love her to life i want to go back and bake with her and cook with her and mm. stuff my belly you know what i mean like i want to do that i want to be go ahead this is this is amazing because i think this will this will illuminate uh, for our listeners and viewers something really really powerful of, of self-awareness and self-discovery petia in your past you had to grow up and become an adult very very quickly right and you had to go out and, and fend for yourself. You had to, you know, bring in your own income, go and traveling different countries at a very, you know, what some would say like a young age, right? And go out and, and do all, all these things. And for me, on the flip side, I was like, I stayed at home till I was like 24. You know, I, I lived in my, in my house till I was 24. So I felt like I had this kind of, um, you know, I felt like a kid trying to prove myself in, in an adult world, you know, joining a, becoming an entrepreneur and saying, Hey, you know, I'm this entrepreneur and I'm doing all these things and like beating my chest, being powerful. And like, I didn't feel at the core level, like I really was, I felt inauthentic, all these kinds of things. And so my whole objective was to, to grow up, right? You're, and then, and then I recognize now like that it's, it's an important balance because I also see that there's value, and this is something I've been sharing with you recently, the value of being a father and also the value in being a mother, right? Like standing in the father. And that doesn't mean necessarily having a kid, right? Or planning on having a kid right now. Um, it could mean that like you are fathering in a dream. You're fathering in something that's important to you. You're fathering in, you're mothering in um, you know, a community. You're mothering a community. And there's a, a responsibility of that. So while I feel like growing up, I was I was too much of the kid, and I tried to force myself to be the adult, out of fear, out of like at the at the core of it, it was to impress, it was to be enough, be worthy, fit in, all those kinds of things. And so I got back into just like loving my my kid more, and I've been feeding that a lot. And also like feeding, feeding the father and being that protector and that fighter and that, you know, visionary who stands for what I believe in. I think for, for you, it was kind of like a little bit opposite, but then we still come back to this point where we get to have the balance. Yes, we, we still, it's important to be the mother. It's still important to be the little girl, you know? You know what I love when you mm. thought, just think about it, Chris, how incredible it is. We can be whoever we heck we want. Yes. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. We can be whoever we want. Do you want to be the father and be the leader? Go and be. Do you want to be this little boy who is running on the beach and like oh, having fun? <laughs> be it. Do you want to play video games? Be it. Yes. You know, but be intentional about it. Don't let life dragging you because that's what mm. happens when you don't have the intention. It's like Jim Rohn saying in the morning, you know, if you don't run your day, your day will run you. Totally. That's why. I always own my morning so it's like you it's it's the decision we go back yeah. to the decision we yeah. feel we have to be it's all by choice yeah and, and you mentioned be intentional i also hear being fully aligned and fully present while you're doing that because i could be acting like a little kid and life's like hey chris you need to be more childlike but it is expressed as temper tantrums as I don't want to do this. I just want to lay in my bed all day long, watch movies, you know, like what, what good does that do? Yeah. And if I truly express myself as a little kid and go out and like play in some mud, you know, for, for a half a day, a day, go hiking, go exploring, you know, look under rocks, do, do the things, things that a, a kid would do. Like I will fulfill that aspect of myself versus like being the kid in an unhealthy, like unhealthy way, incomplete, unaligned way. I think it's impo important to know the, the distinction of those, which one we're being. And it goes back, like you said, to the alignment, to your core values. Who are you being? You know, like I know. And it's, it's interesting because I feel like it's like a lifelong discovery mm. because who you were one year ago, it's not who you are now. So don't be stuck in that. Like I used to be a meditation teacher. Now I practice meditation, but I don't have a client, you mm. know? So it's, it's interesting to see like how we are evolving. I'm still practicing it, but am I really being it because I'm not teaching it others. Mm. And we put so many labels on us today. I had a connecting call 
with a girl she's going to become my client she doesn't know it yet Next, yes she one. is yes she is <laughs> another one and the thing is that we were talking and she was like like she's a coach too and she was just like so un unsure of how to call herself she's mm -hmm. calling herself you know a one and then uh she's she just wasn't sure i was like you know what it's really great when you put a title somewhere like on your instagram or but then it's truly about heart to heart yeah human to human yeah like when people talk with you that's what really matters are they aligned with you not all of the people that will come to your life are going to matter in five years yeah and it doesn't mean that you got to treat them that way. Like, I know you're temporary here. It's not that. Yeah. But I'm truly appreciating every single person, but really not being stuck. Not mm. being stuck on titles, not being stuck on ideas. It's so freeing when you, like, open yourself up. Yeah. And you can be anything. I love, I love this. I love this. I had uh, Christy Kiever on earlier. She's talking about brand strategy, right? First, you have to have your vision. Yeah. Then you have to understand your audience. Then you have to have your message dialed in, right? And there, all of that revolves around clarity. And I think that's important to have clarity and to understand those things. Like, okay, like scaling your business, you have to do that because that's like you, you to get to that level and to have your organization represent you, even if you're not there, even if you're putting out content, even if it's an employee, contractor, business partner, whatever, to represent what you're committed to, you have to be clear on that and you have to communicate that within the culture, within the organization. And in the beginning, what a lot of people feel like they need to be a big company, but they're still like a solopreneur. It's like, you, yes, you need clarity, but you don't need clarity specifically on the message and, and you know, the, the vision. Well, like vision helps, but like the audience, like what I think what really makes a difference is the clarity that you can make a freaking difference in someone's life and the yeah. clarity that you're going to show up in this conversation and you're going to give everything you got and it's going to make a difference and it's going to yeah. fucking, pardon my French, change this, per this person's life for the rest yeah. of their life, right? That the, that's clarity right there, that you're going to do that and there's nothing else that can get in the way and, and impact that vision because you're clear clarity and certainty yes because yes. certainty it's what really 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 change people's lives yes because you know you can help people but like why yeah. you know like you're absolutely incredible coach like you changed my life you helped me to get started, launch my podcast, which is my baby, and I love it so much. It, it helped me and opened the, so many doors. It helped me to make more money and monetize. And also, like, you helped me to sign my first client for six months. I never knew it's possible before. Like, because you were like, so what are you doing? Like, three, six, 12 months packages with your clients? I was like, I don't have a packages. And you're like, how do you work with your clients? I was like, well, like drop in sessions or like months to month and you're like what girl okay let's do this so you like pour in me you know and it's like it changed my life so yeah but you were so freaking certain you're like mm. what are you doing you know like you know i was like it was working and you were like how well i'm like well not that well but <laughs> but now because of that i already have three clients that are with me for six months and one that mm. it's 12 months how crazy is that that never happened to me with me like last year like i had people drop in now i have people who pay me 12 months mm. like contract it's incredible so it's it's only because you were so certain yeah. You were clear, like you didn't have the clarity, like what to do, where to go, but you were like, okay, this and this and this, yeah. that's what we get to do. You were not selling me anything, you mm -hmm. know, you were like, Hey, this is what can help you with your business. Are you open to do that? That's exactly what I'm doing with the people that I talk with them. I share with them what work for me on my journey if you're my person i don't need to sell you mm. i have to have something to offer you mm. i didn't have that before and i'm working on it because then what if i pour in you so much and then what mm. like mm. this client that signed up with me for six months and paid six months ahead too yep. okay that's yep. like huge yeah uh just a couple of weeks ago we connected on instagram 
just see each other like like post blah 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 two days i send her dm we jump on the call we're talking this same call you know like just talking your life my life what are you working what's not working i give her some tips and she's like okay how do i work with you mm. if i didn't have something that i yeah. can tell her yeah what and how yeah next steps you know. that's that's super important and and i think one thing you said is you have to have something to offer them right and i think you said you don't have to sell them and i think naturally what you do just who you are sells right you don't have to force a sale you don't have to prove yeah. something you yeah. don't have to push them to to like see the value they'll see it if they're meant to be with you they will freaking see it and they'll be like chris petia you are the best thing since sliced bread you are most amazing freaking thing in my life i'm ready to take that next step how do i do it <laughs> like keep giving it come on come on more <laughs> i like it i like it let's go <laughs> i love it so it's like really discovering what is is your secret sauce what is your heart message your soul's message you know how do you how do you share your soul how do you really step into that do you know who said it chris there was someone who said turn and maybe oprah maybe somebody else mm -hmm. turn your mess into your message mm. Yep. And that's because that was the second part of the question that I never went to. We went to the child and then I didn't develop the second <laughs> one. So I will be quick on that. But you see, I have linear thinking too. <laughs> you do. You heard, you heard that interview, huh? <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. I am always there. <laughs> be careful what you're saying. I'm sneaking around. Anyway, so in a good way, in a good way. <laughs> Really, in a good way. So the you see, and now I forgot the top. The first was <laughs> the, the other child. side, yes! child. <laughs> the going deep, the the going deep. So like, the going really deep, deep. What I'm like really starting to develop, and that I know I will like really rediscover with uh, my new mentor. Mm -hmm. Um, she wants me to go really, really deep on the struggle that I went through and target those people, like yeah. specifically deep in that. Yeah. So when you ask me what I'm working on right now, so, you know, when we go through some pain, I don't know about you, but I block it. Mm, yep. I, I block it. Like mm. it, it's, it's like, I'm cool. Like nothing happened. Okay. It healed. You don't want to go back and revisit it. Mm. So it's inside of me. And I know, yes, I was abused. I was suffering with eating disorder. I was in toxic relationships. I disrespected myself and my body because I, I had an eating disorder. I was feeling ashamed and guilty. And I say it, I don't feel it. Like, mm. yeah, it, it can still hurt. But I feel like it's just like you want to like, numb it and put yeah. the wall so it doesn't hurt anymore like you don't want to be hurt anymore what happens it's when we don't share our deepest darkness mm. with others they cannot connect and sometimes like when like you know i did few like woman circles when i was doing guided meditation or talking about how to connect with your highest self like mm -hmm. you in five years how to connect with her mm -hmm. When I was talking, some of the women, they either cry or they had their tears in their eyes because I put all the walls down mm. because I was being myself, because I allowed myself to feel again. So one of the things to really realize who you are, it's feel the feelings, mm. because if not, they will feel themselves anyway. You mm. will get sick. You will get tired. You will be overeating or overtraining. There mm. will be always something to distract you. And once I realize who I am, I can go back. It's like once you really expand the plastic bag, it can never go to the same like right. smallness right. ever. Right. I will never dim my light for anyone. Some people will come to my life. I will love them and I will just not love them forever. And it's okay. They were stepping stones. Some people are I, building. I think you'll, the you'll love them forever. You'll love them forever. And you won't like, like, like the love. I think love, we get to love every human being, right? Like I love every human being, even if they're a total complete jerk and butthead, right? And there's a difference between like deep 
love, romantic love, soul love, right? That's that's a difference. So like you love them and you don't have to tolerate them being in your life. You set up boundaries and put them in a, in a place in your life, a position in your life where they probably don't have access to you anymore or yeah. a conversation isn't worth it because they are so toxic or, or if they got mm -hmm. to that point, then you still love and appreciate them, but they just aren't a good fit for your life and being your greatest possible self. Yeah. There is one thing that I just read that truly resonates with my heart and it's really about the boundaries uh, mm -hmm. in our life, the healthy boundaries. Yeah. So uh, I was reading it and I don't know who mentioned it, but it was in a book from Danielle Laporte. Mm -hmm. And she was saying that fully evolved and awake human being, it's like a river. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a fully alive river. Mm -hmm. And that's your healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. So you're like this river. So when you're fully awake, you're like a river. When people come to you, they cannot cross you easily, right? Mm. right? However, if you're not awake, if you're not like really respecting who you are, your boundaries, you are like a dry river. People mm. will go across you. Wow. People will step on you. Yes. So you, when you awake, when you love yourself, when you open yourself, you are like this beautiful, alive river. People can come to you, you can embrace them. Mm -hmm. However, they cannot cross you. They cannot hurt you anymore. Hmm. Wow. That's it's powerful. powerful. It's a great analogy. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So we're in the final moments of this amazing interview. And Petia, you've done a bunch of interviews and you've also interviewed a lot of people. What's been the most powerful question you've ever been asked? or asked the most powerful question that i can think of really it's when you asked me today it's mm -hmm. where i'm really going deep right now because it really makes me reflect on this never-ending journey mm -hmm. and what truly truly means to go deep because going deep it's go back to the darkness it's mm. because you know without the without the darkness there is no light mm. and sometimes it's easier to embrace the fun the light the lightness yeah. we don't want to go back to the dark because i had so much of it that i'm like i'm so happy on the light without that though so thank you for reminding me of that that's something that i'm working on right now Mm -hmm. And the question that I asked that I got my guest and she's uh, Sarah Pendrick. She's mm -hmm. a girl talk LA. Mm -hmm. She has almost like 200,000 followers on her Instagram. She's super sweet. She's a self love advocate and empowering woman traveling the world speaking incredible women. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking with her and I gave her a question. And I she was recently in Paris. So I was like, mm -hmm. okay, Sarah, let's go back. Let's go back to Paris. Imagine you are sitting on a bench mm -hmm. in a park in a Paris and you have a beautiful view. You're sitting there contemplating and there is a little baby girl running to you. She runs to you, she's smiling and she says, who are you? Mm. What would you tell her? And she was like speechless. She had mm. no words. She was like, that's such a brilliant question. I never got that question before. So what she says, she was like thinking about it. And then she says, I'm you. I'm just you. I'm just here to love. I'm just here to guide you. I'm just here yeah. to show you the world. So that was beautiful because that it's just, it's beautiful because you are very strategic. You're very organized. You love your planning and schedules and everything. And you know me, I love it too. I, I, I do my plan. I plan my day and everything. And when it comes to something big, I just want to know when it's something happening. What is it about? And then I want to go with the flow. Give me my space because that's when I expand. Mm. When you tell me it has to be this, 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 then I shut down. Mm. Beautiful. So I, yeah. So beautiful. I want to go one one more exercise. Can we can we do an exercise together? Are we doing handstands here? I can move my chair. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. It's one year from now. 
and your greatest possible self version of yourself. You can go ahead and cl close your eyes. Good job. Um, Good your greatest girl. possible self version <laughs> version of yourself. <laughs> um, version of yourself acknowledges you today. What does she acknowledge you for? And be her and acknowledge you. You're so freaking good. Um, <laughs> so, Pythia, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you for showing up, for stepping up the game, for showing up not just for yourself, but for the other women. I'm so proud of you saying yes, even when you're scared. I'm so proud of you because you finally learned to love who you are, your body, you're nurturing your mind, your body, you attracted the dream clients, you attracted the love of your life. You're so deserving. You're so beautiful. You're so capable and I love you. You'll make me cry. Anything else she acknowledges you for? I think that's it. <clears throat> you know you what? Know, one, one more thing, thing for creating the best badass event for women in April. Mm. She changed dozens and dozens of lives. Yes. Because it's scary as heck. But I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Yes, you are. Beautiful. So the women and people in our audience definitely want to know how they can stay connected with you, Miss Kolibova. How do they do that? So the easiest way would be connect with me on Facebook or Instagram. I love Instagram. I'm always there. You can sneak peek on my life behind the scenes uh, on be.strong.minded. That's my Instagram. Super easy to find me. That's the best way really to connect with me or shoot me an email at petty at bestrongminded.com. I'm always around. You are amazing. And I love this conversation. I'm excited for our next one. Keep up the heat, superstar. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I love that necklace too. It's a great necklace. I wonder, wonder whoever got it from you for you must have really great, great taste. Great, great taste. The, the best one ever. Though. Yeah, yeah, best ever. Super blessed. Thank you. You're welcome. Have the best day ever. I'll see you soon. Bye, Chris.